hello sir can you hear a very good day to all the participants today is uh, international yoga day so yogic scriptures say yuj iti yoga that means uh, to culminate with oneself is yoga maharshi patanjali refers yoga as uh, chitta vritti nirodaha that emphasizes on uh, achieving mental poise by adopting a self disciplined way of life and culmination of physical mental and spiritual consciousness i wish all the participants uh, as well as our uh, honorable speaker on behalf of abhaypur happy international yoga day to one and all coming to our today's webinar our resource person dr vijay induvadan kulkarni sir he has uh, 10 years of uh, experience in uh, pharmaceutical formulation development one year of experience in working as a uh, post doctoral research at usa three years of experience in academic institutions he has experience in pre formulation solid oral dosage forms development for nces solubility enhancement of poorly soluble drugs by hot melt extrusion is his uh, special uh, wing he has managed a group of uh, 10 plus phd students and uh, associated with uh, formulation lab setups for a tablet uh, course at the university of uh, mississippi uh, he has uh, mpharm approved guideship from solapur university and phd approved guideship from manipal university He has worked in uh, uh, Steer Life India Private Limited uh, Bengaluru industry as uh, right from uh, group leader to deputy general manager. He has been in uh, academic sector as assistant professor and in charge principal of uh, Saveri College of Pharmacy, Pandrapur, uh, Solapur. He has his post doctoral uh, research uh, scholarship from uh, University of Mississippi, Oxford, uh, USA. Uh, he has been uh, involved in uh, many. formulation aspects such as hot melt extrusion using uh, supercritical carbon dioxide taste mast formulation by hme evaluation of polymers as recrystallization inhibitor on solid dispersions influence of polymer on solubility and stability of poorly water soluble drugs by hme and effect of polymer molecular weights using hme and uh, uh, formulation development of fast dissolving films and also in uh, pre formulation by tga and bsc also uh, uh, one of uh, his academic credits uh, he has completed m farm from uh, bitspilani rajasthan and uh, b farm from manipal and he has qualified uh, gate with 92.18 percentile so which is quite uh, academically a, a good achievement he has uh, his phd research summary from uh, to develop uh, novel non viral gene delivery system targeting specific cell and uh, enhancing gene expression under the guideship of uh, professor murthy uh from icmr new delhi so i would like to invite uh, uh, dr vijay induvadan kulkarni sir who is uh, currently working as uh, deputy general manager steer life india private limited to begin the session on formulation using hot melt extrusion method uh vijay kulkarni sir welcome to the webinar so you need to uh, on your video vijay kulkarni sir uh, vijay kulkarni sir you need to on your video you are ready uh 
good I afternoon can... uh, uh hari are you able to hear me now yeah i can hear but uh, you need to share, uh, i think your video is not on i think you need to uh, share the uh, hello your video is not on your audio is okay so uh, narhari uh, sir i can hear you but uh, your video is not we are not able to see can you just share the screen <laughs> hello yes sir we can hear you uh, can you just uh, click on share screen sir now it's okay we can see you hello 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 sir yeah please you can your video sir audio audio video video is just your that is that is share the slide sir share the slide no ah you have to share the slide you are not sir yes Uh, participants, you can just hold on. Uh, I think uh, uh, there is some technical issue. They'll be, be sorted in one or two minutes. Yeah, sir. Now it's okay. Now it's okay. Just uh, unmute yourself, sir. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Uh, just uh, uh, I would just like to welcome because you are not in the on the screen. 
now we have come on the screen so i just want to say to all the participants uh, okay. here is uh, dr vijay induvadan kulkarni sir so i was just talking about uh, he he is working presently as uh, a deputy general manager steer life uh, bangalore steer life limited so welcome sir welcome for the uh, webinar session uh, now the mic is yours uh, we can please begin the session sir Uh, so first of all, uh, uh, I would like to, to uh, thank uh, Aditya Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research for giving an opportunity uh, for a web. And uh, my today's talk is going to be on a hot belt extrusion uh, technology, which is going to be used for developing various formulations. So Harir, if you are able to see my screen, please yeah, uh, confirm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, you, we can, but uh, just make it full screen, sir. Yeah, now it's perfect. Okay. So uh, I would like to thank uh, Aditya Institute uh, of uh, Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Bangalore, uh, in association with uh, Indian Pharmaceutical Association. Uh, this is a webinar series which has been going on. Uh, exactly. My topic today is formulation using hot melt extrusion process. Uh, this is something a new technology which has been emerged from last uh, 25 to 30 years in pharmaceutical industry and has been picking up very rapidly in India. But abroad, uh, there are many companies who have already used, there are certain products already being launched in the market. So I am going to be discussing about this topic uh, on hot melt extrusion process. Now, as you see, uh, the word hot melt extrusion process and the right side you see a picture there is something like a molten mass which is coming outside some machine uh, which is a, a molten material so if i have to frame this word uh, hot melt and extrusion so you are providing hot you are providing a heat to melt something and you are extruding out so the word extrusion means Passing any material through an orifice or a hole is called as extrusion process. So in generally in Indian uh, food which you make, generally chakli or uh, whatever it is like a, a sevais, you pass a, a, a wet mass through an orifice of a different shape. That simple process is called as extrusion. So any, any material passing through an orifice is called as extrusion process. But in this case of hot melt extrusion process, you are in heat and melting some material. So the material which we are trying to use here is a pharmaceutical material. Price of a drug and a polymer. A polymer can be a single polymer or it can be a combination of multiple polymers. So what we do is we take drug and a polymer, we melt this material and once it's melted, it has to be mixed uniformly and then pumped through a dye. Once it comes out through a dye, it has been cooled and a specific shape has been given to the material. So this is typically a hot melt extrusion process. So what is very much important here in this slide is you need to be controlling the rate of melting, mixing and pumping through the dye. So it becomes very critical factors in uh, running a hot melt extrusion process. So what are the factors which are being involved? The factors are temperature, shear and pressure. So these are the three things which occurs inside the machine. Now, why hot melt extrusion process, right? So hot melt extrusion process is a solvent free process. More importantly, it is also a continuous process. So when I say a solvent uh, is not required, so that means you are not adding any organic solvents. So today, uh, we have most of the processes in pharmaceutical industry where we try to avoid as much as possible to add organic solvents. The organic solvents addition has multiple disadvantages. One, it has some fire hazards, it has environmental hazards, it has also some kind of a residue remaining in the material can even cause certain problems once the formulation has been consumed. So as per se, solvent is generally tried 
to be avoided into a pharmaceutical process. Apart from that, this machine is a highly versatile machine which can do homogenization and even it can be used for some other applications which I am going to be discussing in the coming slides. Just uh, when I was being discussing with uh, Mr. Harrier, so he asked like whether the products are been there into the market, how well the product has been known, how well the technology has been known. This is one of an example where I have been marked in the red. These are a few of the products which are uh, there in the market and highly uh, high volumes have been there into the market. So one I see is Grisio Felwin is again, we have uh, studied in our uh, B farm uh, test books. It's a very poorly soluble drug and it's an antifungal drug. So it's a crystalline uh, drug. So what we do is by hot melt extrusion process. So we are converting the crystalline material to an amorphous material. So by doing so, you enhance the solubility of the drug. So this is one, Norvir Keletra, which is an anti-HIV drug or an anti-retroviral drug, is again one of the classical examples. You have uh, Zithromax, which is azithromycin, phenofibrate, and many more, which have been already there into the market. So uh, this is not something which has been uh, a new technology. This has been probably 25 to 30 years back, this technology was been there, but not been used extensively. And, and even in the syllabus of the pharmacy, this has been not been included in some parts. So uh, our uh, team had been discussing with multiple universities, uh, uh, deemed to universities, so that like they can introduce some kind of these chapters into their syllabus. So multiple ways have been there, but uh, this is not uh, a very highly uh, known to the current era. Uh, coming to the pharmaceutical interest in HME, what you can see the slide is that uh, number of patents which have been filed by the countries. So what you see is around Germans and US, they are the highest uh, uh, number of patents which they have in terms of hot melt extrusion application. So whereas other Asians, so we have been picking it up, but not to an extensive way, but still uh, we have been contributing it. But uh, this data is still a very old data, but now uh, I don't have a, a data of 2020, but uh, I surely see that like the number of uh, patents filed by the Asians has been uh, probably more than 10% now. Now, before we try to understand uh, hot melt extrusion process, what has been its application, where it has been used, we need to understand the principles of the technology or the process. So hot melt extrusion is a process which is generally been used in plastic industry for last six to seven decades. So from plastic industry, it has been taken by a pharmaceutical industry in making formulations. But overall, the principle of the hot melt extrusion process is it's a uniform mixing of the material. When I say a uniform mixing of the material, it is mostly a viscous material. Now, whenever I want to mix a high viscous material, conventional mixing equipments may not suffice the need. So there where the HME or hot melt extrusion plays a role over here. So in HME, it does three types of mixing. One is shearing, second is kneading, and third is stirring. So now in a, in a simple uh, trivial language, if we need to understand shearing, we have studied this in the rheology. Shearing is pressing two plates of the material. So if I'm just uh, doing this activity, this is called as shearing. So what the screw does, the processor does, it shears the material. Uh, and because of this shearing of the material, so you are uh, doing the shear thinning of the material. So viscosity gets down. Second is kneading. So kneading is nothing but making the material wet. So this is what we see on the right hand side. Kneading has been used to cause wetting. Now, 
if you see a simple understanding of a simple way of putting kneading is when i take a wheat flour to that if i add water and then start mix start mixing this water and a starch or a flour so what happens is during that that i am just going to be squeezing the material punching the material stretching the material bending the material and twisting the material so and finally after all those things you get a dough and this can be used for making tea but this entire process is called as kneading why we do that mixing in uh, uh, making the dough is to wet the starch flour or the wheat flour by adding that water the entire starch molecule gets wetted so this is the activity called as kneading so hot melt extruder even does this kneading activity the third and the last most uh, mixing effect is uh, stirring stirring generally we understand using any common stirrer we are mixing the liquids so when we mix this liquid with some dispersion in that so you are going to solubilize it or disperse it so that's a simple stirring so there are three types of total mixing shearing kneading and stirring shearing is for high viscous material kneading is for solid materials stirring is for a very uh, liquid type of material now as i have been discussing the earlier slide in terms of uh, this technology or few of the products which are been available in the market is used for enhancing the solubility of the drug when i took an example of grisio felven lopinavir and ritonavir which is an anti hiv drug so these products which are available in the market they are solid dispersion so now solid dispersion uh, what is the solid dispersion that we will understand in the uh, the exact the, the presented slide so solid dispersion is nothing but what we have is a blue or a violet color matrix of a polymer and the cubes which have been there on the left hand uh, uh, picture is these are the particles which are in the crystalline form dispersed into the matrix system so this is as crystalline solid dispersion because the material inside which is dispersed is crystalline in shape and crystalline in nature and that is why it's crystalline solid dispersion how do we understand the crystalline solid dispersion you need to do a simple dsc test differential scanning calorimetry or it can be a x ray crystallography and in the terms of uh, dsc what we see is a polymer is amorphous in nature drug is a crystalline in nature so when you do a dsc you will typically see a melting point sharp peak of crystalline drug melting and the appearance of the total material when it comes out of the machine is going to be opaque and what we see is tg is called as last transition of the polymer and the melting point of the drug this is crystalline solid dispersion moving to the next the middle one is amorphous solid dispersion so amorphous solid dispersion is one again we have the same matrix system which has been there in this now the drug is not into a crystalline form this is into an amorphous form and when you run a dsc what you see is a drug is amorph the drug is also converted into an amorphous form the polymer was already an amorphous so what you see once you run a uh, dsc you see two glass transition temperature one is of a drug and second is of a uh, polymer third form is amorphous solid solution so amorphous solid solution is the one where you have polymer and the drug completely be dissolved as a one single homogeneous solution so this continuous homogeneous solution is called as amorphous solid dispersion now in this amorphous solid dispersion what you see is there is one single glass transition temperature unlike the amorphous solid dispersion here you see there is one single tg that means it is a homogeneous mixture of a drug and a polymer now hot melt extrusion is been used for making solid dispersion the solid dispersion can be crystalline solid dispersion or it can be an amorphous solid dispersion 
Now, why crystalline solid dispersion is required? So application of this is you mix the drug, extrude it. This can be used in application of controlled drug release or extended drug release formulations. Second, you are reducing the particle size by heavy dispersing the drug in the pat, uh, polymer matrix system. So the drug now converts into micro or a nano crystalline uh, structure, and then that's get distributed in the polymer. So here the application is again for solubility enhancement. Even you can just mix the drug and the polymer just for making taste masking because the drug is not directly into contact with the tongue. So that is why there is a polymer which has a neutral taste and hence taste masking can be possible. But what we see crystalline solid dispersion, crystalline is a most stable form. That is why the amorphous, uh, therefore the crystalline solid dispersion is more thermodynamically stable. But whereas amorphous solid dispersion, this has been used for enhancing the solubility and dissolution rate, thereby it has been used for increasing the bioavailability. But uh, we need to be very cautious here because once you convert a crystalline material to amorphous material, it is going to be thermodynamically unstable. So there are certain criteria. If whenever you make an amorphous solid dispersion or a solid solution, you need to select the right amount of polymer so that the entire solid dispersion is stable till the shelf life. As a schematic for here, so what you see a hot melt extruder where you see a material is been input from here and been passed through a barrel from an orifice over here. So this can be used in directly converting into molded tablets. It can be used in making films. It can be used into making pellets. It can be used in making granules. So it has multiple applications uh, whereby you can convert a solid dosage form which can be a tablet or it can be a film melt in mouth or a film can, can be even for a topical applications as i am working with steer we are also the manufacturers of uh, equipment and i take care of uh, uh, providing an applications or developing a formulation using these equipments for pharmaceutical applications so we have a very small version called as omicron 10p this is for uh, highly suitable for new chemical entities where you have a very small amount of drug or it can be even uh, been used into universities where the amount of material is not very high. You can just try, test it, do a pre-formulation studies, concept studies can be possible. So this uh, can process minimum of 20 grams. The next version is Om Omicron 12P, which is a bigger machine. Uh, it can be used into a lab uh, development activities. 20 millimeter machine Omega 20P is for a pilot scale machine and Omega 30 is for a commercial applications. Now having said this, very important for you to understand is screw elements. As I had showed you an earlier schematic, so there is a barrel. In that barrel, there are screws which are been there. So hot melt extrusion is uh, a twin screw co-rotating processor. Now in the when say twin screw rotating means like both the screw rotate in the same direction. So this is called as co-rotating processor. In this barrel, there are multiple elements or screws which have been there. The screws are kneading elements or a mixing elements and second type is called as conveying elements. I just describe those things. So when you go to a conveying elements, so conveying element is like a conventional screw. So it has a rounded pitch. Once it rotates, it is able to push the material forward. So higher the length of the element, higher the length of the pitch, faster is the conveying. Shorter the length or the shorter the pitch, slower is the conveying efficiency screw element which is used for mixing. So when I say mixing, it can be kneading, mixing or stirring. There are multiple types of screw elements. 
last year we are one of the leaders into manufacturing of various equip uh, various uh, elements uh, for various applications so in the world we have the highest uh, number of screws designs geometries which can be used for various applications here we use these screws for mixing the mixing can be as i described it can be for shearing it can be for kneading it can be for stirring so these are the heart of any process uh, as i described it's a twin screw process so as you see there are two screws each screws rub to each other thereby they are self cleaning and self wiping profile uh, one thing which you need to understand is is uh, a residence time probably uh, we can discuss this offline uh, uh, because it involves uh, many many other things but in a nutshell important thing is like any hplc when you do residence time of the material is very important when I, when you elute any material to a column chromatography the residence time of the material is very important so now residence time means the material which stays inside the column or a barrel is called as residence time it can be varied based on screw rpm feed rate and even the screw configurations so uh, we can discuss this later on if there is any individual questions i'm just running a video uh, uh, of a twin screw process how it rotates uh, so are you uh, are you able to see the uh, video yeah 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 okay so now what you see a screen which is a twin screw uh, hot melt extrusion process the orange color is the material which is going to be flowed inside the two barrels so what you see is one barrel this is one hole and the second round structure so you have two screws both the screws are rotating in the same direction now the orange color is a material and it has been melted because of this melting it is now getting homogeneously mixed and you see the material moves from one screw to another screw and then comes back and moves to another screw so this is called as shearing and even a proper mixing which occurs inside the screws so this is just as a, a, a snapshot of this what you see in the picture over here is the white color is a material now it moves from this direction to the next direction screws are rotating in the same direction so this is a inside of the hot melt extrusion barrel how the process occurs there are various polymers which are being available uh, for uh, developing certain formulations so i have uh, identified a few of them based on the literature so the the polymers generally have glass transition temperature some polymers even have a melting point so now based on the drug melting point drug degradation drug properties or the drug solubility in the polymer you can have a choice of selecting the polymer in hot melt extrusion process sometimes you can use a single polymer or you can use a combination of a polymers in melt extrusion process in case the polymer is not at all getting melted or if it needs very high melting point you can select suitable plasticizers when you use a suitable plasticizers you can reduce the melting point or the glass transition temperature of the polymers i'll just take through a uh, a slide how a development process or a development strategy into hot melt extrusion so pre formulation becomes very very important here Be that is what the point which i was specifying earlier when you use a polymer selection of the polymer has to be very very important so you need to do some thermal studies before you start uh, developing a process for hot melt extrusion 
the important thing is to understand how the drug and the polymer miscibility is been there so you have to choose a polymer currently if i am using certain polymer for enhancing the solubility of the drug my first aim is going to be i will select a polymer which is hydrophilic in nature second the other you see if i am going to be using it for a controlled release i would select a polymer which is of controlled release properties if i am going to be using it for a uh, a erosion type of a matrix system i would probably try to use a polymer which is more of insoluble like ethyl cellulose so selection of the polymer becomes very important over here and in this selection you need to do some kind of a dsc or xrd studies trying to understand whether the drug is miscible or it gets uh, uh, dispersed into the polymer or not so those few pre formulation studies has to be done once the pre formulation study has been done you need to go for an extrusion process in hot melt extrusion process there are four major parameters which you need to work on one is screw speed which is the rpm of the screw which is running second is going to be the barrel temperature what temperature you are going to be using it to melt the polymer or the drug polymer combination third is going to be the feed rate how much of material you are going to be putting inside the barrel and fourth is going to be the screw configuration so when i say a screw configuration so how much amount of mixing elements how much amount of uh, conveying elements you are going to be selecting will depend uh, on the drug polymer properties so using all those things you optimize the extrusion process once the process has been done you take the material out of the extrusion which is going to be like a molten mass coming out so based on that you further give a shape or that molten mass can be broken down into particles and converted into a tablet or filled into a capsules the last once you have got all these materials you need to subject it for stability studies because if you have been converting the slime material to an amorphous material so you need to see that it doesn't reverse back from amorphous to crystalline so stability or the shelf life has to be studied by performing accelerated stability conditions this is one of the general formulation schematics you take a physical blend of a drug and the polymer you perform extrusion once the extrusion has been done by hme method so what you get is a pellets these pellets are further milled down using suitable mill you get a powder or granules these granules along with extra granular material you convert into a tablets so now this crystalline material now you see it's more of a glassy shape in nature the pellets so this glassy shape indicates it's a solid solution that means you have converted a crystalline material to an amorphous form and thereby you have enhanced the solubility of the drug with this little little bit of background i am going to discuss about certain case studies which we have done this is one of the case studies uh, which i am representing is during my post doctoral studies in us and we had performed certain uh, experiments and this is also published so i have a reference at the bottom so we have studied the uh, effect of pressurized carbon dioxide on hot melt extrusion of a cellulosic formula, polymer what was the objective of this study the objective of the study was to use carbon dioxide for plasticization uh, if you remember i was been talking about plasticization is going to be helping you in reducing the melting point of the polymers so that was one objective to use pressurized carbon dioxide second to increase the porosity of the uh, extrudes so thereby enhance the dissolution of the drug so this was the two objective which we have used uh i can skip this slide for general information uh we just wanted to say this as a pressurized carbon dioxide uh, because earlier our intention was to use supercritical carbon dioxide but we were not able to uh, estimate or identify whether when you put this carbon dioxide into an extruder 
whether you are able to achieve uh, the temperature of 31 degrees centigrade and, and uh, the pressure of 73, which is a super critical region. Uh, so we just call this as a uh, pressurized carbon dioxide because we were not able to measure the temperature and the pressure. This is a, a simple thermogram uh, before we started working on the formulations. So what we did, we, we performed certain uh, experiments and we also did certain uh, pre-formulation studies. The one on the top, which is pure ketoprofen. So we have used ketoprofen as a drug and we have used hydroxypropyl cellulose as a polymer. On the top, the black color, what you see is uh, the DSC curve of ketoprofen. The peak comes around 95.67 degrees. So it's a melting point, peak melting point of the drug. Now when I'm combining the drug with polymer, so what you see is as I keep on reducing the drug concentration from 90% to 20%, that is the drug loading, so what I see is as I've decreased the drug concentration from 90 to 20, I'm not able to see any melting point of the drug. So typically at 30% and 20%, you are seeing the total peak has been abolished. This indicates that we have converted the crystalline ketoprofen into a amorphous ketoprofen. So I'll just skip the slide. Uh, these are certain processing conditions which you have used. Uh, here, the point was, the study was using carbon dioxide. What happens without carbon dioxide? That was a reference study. So if you are using the same process, hot melt extrusion for excluding uh, HPC, hydroxypropyl cellulose and drug, uh, so we need to go for a temperature of around 140 degrees centigrade without carbon dioxide. The moment we add carbon dioxide, we, we are able to run a process 20 degree lower than the actual process requirements. So we could run the process at 120 degrees centigrade. So what does this indicate? That carbon dioxide now acts as a plasticizer and thereby helps to reduce the processing conditions by 20 degrees Celsius. Now, same ketoprofen and uh, HPC, when you run this process without carbon dioxide and with carbon dioxide, once the extrude comes out of the barrel, the extrudes are cross-section micrographs, which are, which are uh, being taken as micrographic sections. In the, without carbon dioxide, what you see is there is no porous structure over here. But whereas with carbon dioxide, what you can see is a nice porous structure, which has been formed. Because the moment the material comes out, there is an expansion of the gas. Once the gas expands, it leaves porous structure behind. So this is a porous structure of the extrudes when it comes outside the hot field extrusion with carbon dioxide. Now, if we understand the release studies, uh, uh, what you see is physical mixture is in the blue form. Uh, this, there are three graphs because we had used three different grades of uh, uh, HPC. So in all three cases, what we see is physical mixture is very, very poor dissolution now. There is very poor release. Moment you convert into a solid dispersion using hot, hot melt extrusion process without carbon dioxide, which is one in the red, you can still see there is an enhancement of the uh, drug release. But when you use with carbon dioxide, the rate and the extent goes very, very high. The rate and extent uh, of the, the, the ketoprofen with carbon dioxide is high because it forms a porous structure. Because of the porous structure, the dissolution enhances. So this is one of the reasons where when you process a material with carbon dioxide, you are getting a porous structure and you are getting the enhanced dissolution rate. So conclusion is uh, carbon dioxide acts as a plasticizer and thereby reduces the processing condition by 20 degrees. 
the surface area and the porosity of the polymer was increased and that is why you see enhanced dissolution uh, the other point also which was been there so once you get without carbon dioxide and with carbon dioxide so with carbon dioxide was very easy to mill so efficiency of milling was also been improved so with this we'll go for the next case study which is solubility enhancement of mefenamic acid mefenamic acid is also a very poorly water soluble drug here we have used eudrogid epo as one of the polymer so this is again published article you can use it for uh, your reference later on so the objective was to enhance the solubility of mefenamic acid by hot melt extrusion process uh, the drug formula and the melting point of the drug was 230 degrees centigrade so we have selected uh, eudrogid epo the glass transition temperature of eudrogid epo is 50 degrees centigrade so now uh, the formulation conditions we have used mefenamic acid were from 20% to 40% and temperature for processing was 110 110 degree centigrade now here again what you see is when we run a process and epo eutrogy epo and mefenamic acid at 40% 30% 25% and 20% all of them showed no drug melting point as you see in the pure mefenamic acid ma at the bottom so that these same extrudes were kept at uh, various conditions in the stability studies after 3 months even there was no reconversion of an amorphous material back to crystalline material so again that has been tested by a dse curve after 3 months so at this point you are not able to see at 230 degrees you are not able to see any drug melting point so other way of uh, understanding whether the drug has converted to an amorphous form is by xrd method so the bottom what you see is a pure mefenamic acid the blue color lot of multiple peaks which comes the other peaks which are been there are of a, a solid dispersion made by hot melt extrusion process so now you can confirm there are no peaks uh, of the drug hence we assume and we conclude that the drug is been converted into an amorphous form again we see the uh, drug dissolution profile you see mefenamic acid pure drug at the bottom it's very almost uh, close to zero but as you start uh converting into an, a solid dispersion the lowest uh, the drug loading which is 20% gives you a highest drug release the rate as well as the extent is both high uh we even have uh, tried to evaluate the extrudes or the extrudate using ftir and what we see is certain hydrogen bonding or hydrogen uh, bonding interactions between the drug and the polymers the one which has been circled is the coo double bond which is been there in the polymer so which starts interacting with the drug so there is a hydrogen bond formation at this level but whereas in the lower level you are not able to see so sometimes that hydrogen bonding is helpful but in certain cases it may not be also helpful so but it gives you certain uh, information that any drug to polymer interaction is there or not i can just skip this slide uh, here what we conclude is by using hot melt extrusion process a very poorly water soluble drug we are able to enhance the solubility by converting this into a solid dispersion form so there is the huge amount of role of a polymer and the interaction of the drug with the polymer having said this point till now what we have understood is hot melt extrusion process and its application in enhancing the solubility of the drug so hot melt extrusion can be even used for continuous granulation process in our earlier slides which i have talked about three different mixings one was shearing so shearing is more helpful in hot melt extrusion process 
and by hot melt extrusion process you are enhancing you are enhancing the solute the drug the second type of mixing was kneading so kneading is very important in terms of granulation hot melt extrusion can be used for going doing a melt granulation process or it can be used for wet granulation process now why i'm talking about this slide is that pharmaceutical industry have seen some major changes or some breakthrough which has happened occurred in last 50 years the first breakthrough was slow speed shear uh, or low shear uh, planetary mixer that was been replaced by high shear rapid mixing granulator generally called as rmg so nowadays there are very less amount of products which are been granulated using planetary mixer most of them are using rapid mixing granulator rmg that was a major change which occurred the later stage tray drying which was used for drying of the granules was been replaced by fluid bed drying so fluid bed drying was more efficient less time consuming and very efficient way of drying the material whereas in tray you need to keep on changing the trays need to uh, turn around the material in the tray and keep for longer time so that was been replaced by fluid bed uh, drying now what is the next next is going to be batch converting a batch process to continuous process hot melt extrusion is a continuous process so thereby there is a new trend which is now coming up and picking it up which is moving from a batch process to continuous process why i am talking about this is in terms of granulation process this is a typical way or typical steps which have been involved into granulation the one which has been marked in the red is a batch process you do blending you do wet granulation in a rapid high shear rapid mixing granulator then you to the you, you take this to a next next stage which is going to be drying so this is a batch process but whereas milling is already a continuous process keep on adding the material you get sized granules tablet compression is also a continuous process because keep on adding the material it keeps on compressing the material so now converting any granulation process to continuous manufacturing the bottleneck is the wet granulation and the drying process so now this red has to be converted into continuous so that from start to the end you can make the entire system as continuous manufacturing there is something a regulatory prospective in this case us fda director uh, miss or dr janet woodcock what she says is in coming 25 years continuous manufacturing is going to be the next process the reason being it is going to be more cleaner flexible and efficient process even at the bottom what you see is the ceo of gsk mr andrew also says gsk is now planning to move uh, from a batch process to continuous process apart from that johnson and johnson uh novartis and many various other big pharmaceutical companies are already there working with continuous manufacturing process so now with this background i'll just give certain case studies in terms of granulation process in a twin screw granulation process so first example a case study here is a wet granulation process so we have used metformin as a drug and a binder is pvp so we take the drug and the binder and what you see in the uh, picture here the yellow color from here the material has been fed inside the barrel here there is a moisture added in the next zone which is moisture addition zone granulation here the uh, kneading occurs we keep this barrel at the higher temperature and what comes out is a dried granules so these are typically below we have a particle size distribution highly suitable for any tablet uh, compression process 
so the bulk density the tap density are are all are all set for the desired tableting activities this slide shows about when you convert this uh, granulation process you are able to get granules which are free flowing spherical and porous in structure in comparison to the one which is conventional granules which are more flakes in nature so so this helps you in tableting activity so what we saw the case one was wet granulation process we can even do melt granulation process so today there is a product available in the market from novartis which is a metformin along with vildagleptin drug so metformin is melt granulated along with hydroxy propyl cellulose so what we do is drug and hydroxy propyl cellulose is fed into hot melt extruder we keep this temperature at a melting point of hydroxy propyl cellulose we cool the granules in the conveying section once the granules have been cooled what gets out is a granules so now here you are not drying the material because there is no water added it's a simple meltable binder which is hydroxy propyl cellulose you melt the binder and take the granules out of the extruders and typically we see a very good flow property as well as the granule particle size distribution now with these two case studies how this technology helps uh, to the pharmaceutical industry one when i am combining multiple steps into one single step process which is granulation drying and sizing or granulation cooling and sizing in a single step so that means i am reducing the number of equipments when the number of equipment get reduced the area required for manufacturing also get reduced so what you get typically is manufacturing footprint reduces when i say footprint that means the total area for manufacturing get reduced similarly if the number of equipment get reduced the area get reduced overall the energy consumed the electricity the power is reduced human resources get reduced or human interferences get reduces and number of unit operations are also been reduced and in a typical quality control set in the pharmaceutical process after each step we take sample analyze it and get it uh, approved and then it moves to the next step if the total number of steps get reduced the associated quality control test also is reduced so i have a next slide which just talks about uh, the granulation process and it shows how the granules are been formed moisture and shear granulate allowing processing of sensitive api with this highly reproducible process it is possible to obtain the needed granule quality without further drying and side production so nagar we hope the video was okay uh Mr. Narhari, so anybody from Aditya Institute, uh, whether uh, they can uh, respond me saying that with the audio, uh, the audio and the video was okay. yes sir yes sir it was okay okay so do i need to repeat the video or it's okay yeah it's okay sir it was it was quite audible okay so now moving to this uh, comparison versus batch versus continuous process uh, we have already summarized that processing uh, time is reduced the operations are reduced overall the benefit is that by all these things you are able to reduce the cost of manufacturing so we have a case study with us if you are doing it by conventional granulation process if the cost is going to be around 100 rupees for just an example 
by converting that conventional process into a continuous process, you can reduce the cost of manufacturing by around 35 to 50 percent. So if it's 100 rupees, you can convert it to 65 rupees to 50 rupees. So the greater amount of cost reduction. So once the cost reduction occurs, the tablets or the formulations available to the patients also reduces down. Uh, there are multiple ways of for doing continuous process. Uh, I have just listed down conventional batch process, semi-continuous process and a continuous process. When it typically go to a truly continuous process, it involves only two steps process. Just imagine the number of steps which have been reduced down. So uh, there is uh, Johnson & Johnson's first product called Darunavir has been manufactured by continuous process. Vertex Pharma has developed a continuous process for uh, uh, one of the product, which is Evacaftor and Lumacaftor. So industry is already now practice, started practicing uh, continuous manufacturing process. India is also now moving into this area. So we have worked and given this technology to few industries in India. Uh, they are at the initial level, probably in the six to one year, we would see this industry also starts manufacturing granules by continuous manufacturing process. Uh, coming to the uh, last slides uh, is that, what about the scale up factors? So many questions generally comes. So we are not going to be discussing on scale dependent independent factors. So what is very much important in terms of scalability for an hot melt extrusion process is on the right hand, scale dependent, scale independent factors has to be first considered. That is surface area of the well, because surface area of the well decides what is the exposure length of the barrel to the material by understanding that you will understand how much amount of the heat has been transferred to the material. Residence time is more important because this also decides how much heat has been transferred to the material, degree of fill and shear rate. So there are a lot of publications which are been available, how a scale up has to be considered because hot melt extrusion is not a linear scale process. It is a non-linear process. So understanding of scalability is, becomes very important and challenging. So there are a lot of publications which have been available how you can develop and do the scale up using hot melt extrusion is available. So there are a few other applications which have been there. This is one of the application uh, again, which uh, I had performed earlier uh, is continuous manufacturing of nanoparticles by hot melt extrusion process. So what you see is on the, on the picture, we feed lipid, so when I'm saying nanoparticles, this is more with respect to solid lipid nanoparticles. So we use uh, a solid lipid, which is more of a, a meltable lipid at particular temperature. It has been melted. Now to this, the drug solution uh, is been added or the drug and the lipid, which has been mixed here, it can be added here or the drug solution can be added over here, mixed and homogeneously uh, mixed inside the barrel, what comes out is a pre or a primary emulsion. And this primary emulsion can be passed through a high pressure homogenizer. So finally, what you get outside is a solid lipid nanoparticle. So this is a continuous process. I think there, if any of the faculty members or any of the team members, if they have been doing a solid dispersion as their project, uh, there are multiple steps which have been involved into uh, making solid dispersions, uh, sorry, uh, solid lipid nanoparticles. So you need to melt in a separate beaker, you need to keep water at the higher temperature, have to mix, stir and homogenize. So you can eliminate those manual uh, multiple steps. You can convert a single step process for converting any formulations into solid lipid nanoparticles. Uh, with this, uh, I would uh, complete my presentation with a note 
that it's time to change. Why I'm putting this uh, it's time to change? Because now pharmaceutical industry, the academia is more working on conventional processes. How you can convert conventional batch process to continuous process uh, that I have discussed, you can use this into your practices. So it is more time to change that. Second thing is conventional solid dispersion, which is made, made by spray drying, which requires solvents. You can convert solid dispersion using hot melt extrusion process without any solvents. Thereby, you can protect the environment and have a safety uh, processing conditions in your factory. So with this, I finally would thank the team of uh, the Institute of uh, Pharmaceutical Education and Research to giving me an opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, it was a very, very wonderful session. And uh, I think uh, you have uh, just asked the whole academia to just to, it's, it's now the right time to change. Uh, from the conventional method to the continuous process method. Uh, thereby, we are also saving the environment without solvent uh, exposure. Um, I think you have explained in detail about uh, HMA technology, uh, its pharmaceutical interest, marketed products, process details, uh, different processing machines, elements, blocks, screw designs, residence time, polymer selection, along with many case studies. I think in short, you have explained in detail the role of uh, HME from pre-formulation till the stability studies with the uh, steps uh, that has to be taken to move to the continuous processing uh, methods. Uh, I think it was the very, very in detail uh, explanation, sir. Uh, we are very thankful for that uh, in detail uh, session. Uh, can we can we have a question answer session? Uh, sure, sure. To... Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, it's my pleasure to have those questions. I think uh, we have two questions actually from one is from Manish Vani. Uh, he uh, asks, what is the cost of uh, steer twin uh, screw processor lab scale for college projects? See, uh, so if there is any, any process you would like to do, so we offer a very uh, least price for an institute levels. Uh, generally for an industry, the cost is high. So we provide some discounts for institute level. So the cost depends upon what are the accessories you take, but for a bare minimum uh, uh, equipment and everything, the price can be around 25 to 30 lakhs. Okay. So just to give an information, we, we have given our machine to uh, uh, Institute of Chemical Engineering, uh, Institute of Chemical Technology, ICT. We have given it in Manipal, we have given it in Naipur, Hyderabad. So this uh, already is being installed at these institutes. Okay. Uh, currently, there are some other cases like where Naipur, Mohali and few other institutes already have uh, applied for grants uh, from the respective granting agencies. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, we have one more question from uh, Dr. Raj Shekhar Reddy Punur. Uh, he asks, what is the maximum load possible to be converted uh, into extruded material? Uh, did you hear, sir? So what is the maximum? What is the maximum load that is possible to be converted can, can into extruded Repeat the question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is the maximum load that is possible to be converted into extruded material using the mission? Load. Yeah, load, load, maximum load. See, uh, as I showed about uh, the lab equipment or the very smallest one, which can process uh, around 200 grams per hour. Okay. From 200 grams per hour, we can even process up to 1000 kg per hour. Okay. 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 Uh, just a... Uh, uh, information like about GSK Horlicks. Okay. The brand which we generally know. Uh, GSK Horlicks process for them, where we convert the conventional food process uh, by conventional method to a hot melt extrusion process. So we we have done a process development for them, which takes generally around few uh, many hours. We converted them into only a few minutes. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, I think uh, that's all the questions that we have. And uh, one of the participants uh, wants uh, your slides to be shared. Is that possible? No, I already have uh, uh, shared uh, my presentation to uh, Mr. Shankar. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, that can be shared. Sure, sure. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we, on behalf of uh, Abaipa, express wholehearted appreciation for your uh, detailed session on uh, product uh, development by HME Technology. Um, thank you so much for your uh, valuable time uh, that you have spent and uh, the knowledge that you have offered uh, uh, to all the participants. Thank you so much. So just uh, one thing is which I can leave a note over here. Yeah. If any of these students who would like to come and do a project for six months, okay. uh, they, they are invited to come and uh, carry out their projects over here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. We, we definitely, uh, it would be a... Uh, very valuable thing, uh, very, very valuable experience for a student, I believe. Even for the faculty, it's valuable because uh, we are less exposed to industry than uh, the academia. So yeah, it would be helpful for both. Uh, we will we'll definitely take into consideration, sir. Thank you. Uh, I would also offer my uh, sincere gratitude to our uh, Honorable Chairman, Dr. B.A. Vishwanath, sir, for continuous motivation and uh, guidance. Uh, my thank, you. thank you. Thank you, earlier. Uh, my sincere thanks to Mr. Uh, uh, Hanman Nirgundi, sir, and Mr. Shankar for uh, introducing such an eminent speaker. My Also, my regards to the convener, Mr. Suchitra, ma'am, for the efforts in uh, organizing this webinar. And also my warmth to all the departments uh, for their constant support, especially the IT department. I thank all the participants for their uh, patient listening and active participation. I hope uh, that the inputs uh, that are provided by our uh, honorable speaker uh, would definitely guide us in uh, uh, getting to know about the continuous change that is happening in the uh, HME technology in the industry sector. So thank you so much, sir, for your uh, kind words and your knowledge. Uh, uh, we really appreciate your uh, time. So uh, we would definitely like to have one more session with you. Uh, maybe shortly we, we would uh, definitely contact you for uh, in that regard as well. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for all your uh, uh, time and efforts, and I think uh, having a good amount of fifty plus uh, participant on the Sunday after the solar eclipse was also, was also. <laughs> no, it was not fifty plus. It is actually hundred uh, one ten. But uh, the number of participants changes. Uh, I think it is seventy five was uh, online all the time. I think uh, 20, 35 are uh, going, moving and coming back. Uh, <laughs> maybe uh, it's a Sunday evening. Uh, maybe tea session. Still, I think 